All right. We will move now on to 8.03 FY25 budget questions and answers. Dr. Newman or Ms. Michael? Um, we have two budget questions for this evening, and I'll, I'll let Ms. Michael uh, lead those. Thanks. Thank you so much, Chair Gould, Vice Chair Tice, and the school board. The first new budget question this evening is number 31. Um, we have 17 teachers who are ESOL endorsed and teaching at the secondary campus. That was a super, super short. Any questions on number 31 ESOL endorsement? Oh, Ms. Uh, Vice Chair Tice? I just have a question. I think I've asked this before, but I don't remember the answer. Do um, do teachers at the secondary campus get paid any extra when they have that extra endorsement or that extra caseload? They may get they may get extra pay for their endorsement as part of their salary lane adjustment that's done by the coursework that they've taken to get that endorsement, um, but they don't get extra uh, for for teaching ESOL students as part of their um, routine caseload. Got it. Are any of them um, considered case managers for those students? Or is that a different, someone else? Some of them may be case managers. Yes. Other questions or comments? Okay. Question number 32. Um, <clears throat> the first part of the question talks about um, we have an audit that was completed on February 23rd, and we were identified as a leading ESOL program in the state. Um, we are um, one of the only divisions that achieved pre-pandemic growth indicators for our multilingual learners, um, and that growth data was provided. Um, the question also talks about our caseload ratio. We have a caseload ratio of 25 students to one case manager, and that state requirement is 50 to one, so we're at half the level of the state. And when we look at our elementary, middle, multi-language learners, they receive ESOL services in their content classes as well as in small group instruction. And at the secondary level, multi-language learners receive support based on their level of ESOL needs and what that necessary services is for their success. And when we look at developing programs, it's imperative that we follow federal guidelines regarding segregation and support. Um, so ESOL students are moved into content embedded support with native English speakers within one to two years of their arrival at the secondary level. And we have zero sheltered, which means multi-language learner only classrooms at the elementary level. Exposure to native English speaking peers is one of the main factors in language acquisition. So when we look at our summer program, we provide a fully integrated model um, for our English language learners in the summer. All of our teachers, staff for summer school are licensed teachers, and we do provide a full range of data um, to support our tailored instruction for those students, looking at them by name and by need. When we look at the elementary level for summer school, students receive 90 to 120 minutes of language arts and up to 75 minutes of math instruction per day. Our classrooms are supported by a general education teacher as well as specialists, and then our schools do hire ESOL teachers for summer. At the secondary level for the ESOL program, those students are likewise embedded in our summer school program. Um, as we've done in the past, we're working on a memorandum of understanding with Fairfax County Public Schools that will allow us to enroll our secondary multi-language learners in their online ESOL summer programming, which provides a vetted program that we've provided for many years focusing on the acquisition of academic language. So that's a little bit about ESOL and our summer programs. Questions, comments from the board? Yeah, the 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 answer was was quite helpful, and I was glad to I, I was glad to see that there are uh, summer programs that we do participate in for ESOL students. So it seems that um, summer programming is an option for ESOL students. Um, and so, I, and I'm, you know, I have no doubt that FCCPS does, uh, you know, top the ranks for uh, ESOL. Uh, I think we do pretty well uh, with that. I do. Um, I, I want to say I think you know some of the I still want to kind of echo what the uh, ESOL committee sent to us, where while we do well, um, I don't want that just to be a re reason to kind of not think creatively about how to provide services to the to the students who most need it, and so um, I will just leave it at that. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Any questions or further comments on question 32, ESOL summer opportunities? OK, 
Okay. Um, so that concludes the uh, 8.03 budget questions and answers. Um, and that concludes our uh, four rounds of questions to Ms. Michael and Ms. Kopic about the, uh, the budget. Um, and we appreciate the uh, diligence on answering and obviously Mr. Uh, Dr. Bates and um, all the staff that was that was part of the uh, the support for under, getting our understanding and the public's understanding. Um, at this time we are going to vote for the budget um, so we'll hopefully expect Ms. Michael to be clapping at the end of this. Um, I'll be asking for a recommended action Vice Chair Tice for um, 8.03, 8.04, excuse me. Can I talk oh, about it just for a second? Absolutely. That's okay that, no, no, no. I, I just want to say, uh, first of all, thanks to the board, too. Thank you for your um, comments back to the staff. I know that um, m many of our staff worked hard into the night to make sure that you all had as much information as uh, possible and necessary to um, get this budget to a, a really good place. Um, I appreciate the process. I think that... Um, you know, having the multiple rounds of questions like we've always done and put those up online for transparency, I think has been really helpful. Um, you know, this is a process that began really in October when our principals and staff were sort of asked, you know, where do we, where do we want to be in the future? What, do we, what are our needs generally? Um, and then what came forward were really a host of, of great things that um, I think will ultimately help our help our school system and help our staff. Um, in the end, you know, we landed on sort of those big pieces that we typically do. I think we've got a really nice compensation package in there um, for our staff, and I think that we are uh, really building for the future. And I just wanted to say before you vote on it how much I appreciate the support of the board um, and the work that you've done. And, and tonight, um, we are requesting your approval of this budget. Um, we, did, we did have one modification from the last uh, presentation that we did, and that, is, uh, and that came out in the work session last time, and that was with the savings from our health care um, that we're able to capture. Uh, we are recommending as part of the approved, um, or, or not the approved budget, but the, now what will be the school board's advertised budget is the addition of a reading teacher at Mount Daniel. Um, and, I, and I hope tonight, as you saw Phyllis Kravinsky uh, on the screen, you see sort of the value of those, those reading teachers at our elementary school. But I wanted just to say thanks so much for uh, your support. I know Lori's got her hand up. Or oh, Ms. Silver, Silverman. yes. Dr. Noonan, is this a reading teacher, reading specialist, reading interventionist? It's a reading specialist. Specialist, okay, thank you for the clarification. And so I guess a clarification on that is Will they be uh, more focused on uh, kind of reading interventions with students or uh, literacy coaching with teachers? Like, the, I guess what would be the mix? It'll be a combination of both. I don't know exactly what the percentage mix will be, but you saw, for example, Phil Skravinsky on the screen today, you know, with a kidney-shaped table working with five kids. That's why our reading specialists and interventionists do work with students, so uh, there will be some pulling of, of groups. Question. Other questions? Okay. <laughs> all right. Great. Thank you, Thanks. Dr. Thanks for the opportunity. Oh. I didn't mean to interrupt. I just, no, no, I, I just I, felt like you all needed some, <laughs> <laughs> some kudos for your work, too. So thanks. No, I no, appreciate that. Okay. All right. Vice Chair Tice, it's all yours. Your thing, yep. Um, I recommend the action that the school board approve for submission to the city manager the FY 2025 advertised operating fund budget in the amount of $65,229,594 which requires a city appropriation of $52,851,420 as detailed in the superintendent's proposed budget with the following modifications. Increased compensation expenditures by $104,430 for a 1.0 elementary reading teacher and reduced health benefit expenditures by $104,430. Thank you, Vice Chair Tice. Do I have a second? Ms. Murphy, thank you. Uh, all in favor say yes. Yes. Well, any opposed say no. Any abstentions? Okay, motion passes. All right. And let's go ahead and uh, look at 8.05, approval of submission to city manager of FY25 food service budget. Do I have a motion? Vice Chair Tice. I recommend the action that the school board approve for submission to the city manager the FY 2025 advertised food service budget in the amount of $1,519,553 as detailed in the superintendent's proposed budget. Thank you, Vice Chair Tice. Do I have a second? Ms. Henderson, thank you. Uh, do I have a, uh, all, all in favor say yes. yes. Any opposed? 
Any abstentions? Seeing none, motion passes. And finally, 8.06, approval of submission to city manager of FY25 community service budget. Vice Chair Tice, let's keep it going. I recommend the action that the school board approve for submission to the city manager the FY2025 Advertised Community Services Fund budget in the amount of $2,310,700, requiring a total city appropriation of $107,500 as detailed in the superintendent's proposed budget. Thank you, Vice Chair Tice. Do I have a second? Ms. Henderson, thank you. Uh, all in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. All right, so that concludes the approval of all three budgets to the submitted. And Ms. Michael is clapping if you cannot hear it in the public. <laughs> so. Uh, so yes, I really appreciate uh, that. That is a team effort this afternoon and so to get that. Uh, and, and when we say team effort, it's not just those in the room. There are a significant number of meetings in the public, the community, all the schools, um, many types of meetings to put this together. So we're really excited about uh, submitting this. And Dr. Noonan, can you just briefly walk through the next step? We are presenting this to the City Council? Yes, we are uh, presenting it to the City Council for inclusion in the overall city budget um, because, again, we are all the city. Um, and what, that will be uh, an evening coming up, and you'll be doing that. Uh, I'll be sitting alongside of you if you'd <laughs> like. Um, and then oh, it's real close, though. <laughs> <laughs> and then ultimately, uh, the City Council will take action on the entire city budget that includes the schools. Um, in May, and then we will follow up the day after the adoption of the City Council here to do any reconciliation that needs to be done based on the transfer from the City Council. Great. Thank you, Dr. Noonan. Okay, that sounds great. And then one more comment about this before we move on. Uh, Ms. Michael, just to let you know that uh, I think all seven of us on this board have significant experience with board budgets, with budget process, and our own jobs and our own experiences serving on boards. And more than once, in fact, I think I've heard it from almost everyone, they said this is a very different and experience in the standard you set for how we navigate a budget and the budget question process and how you present the answers, how your transparency with the budget um, is, is just a, a, a unbelievable. And we really appreciate that. And we're really lucky to have you guiding us through this, not just us, but the entire community. So thank you very much.